Hi, everyone. Let's take a look at a more advanced prompting technique that you can use in mid-journey to manipulate your prompts a bit so that you can get variations to your images. Although this is a more advanced technique, it is still a beginner-friendly video. So let's go. First things first, I am using Midjourney version 5.1. However, this particular multi-prompting technique works for all the other versions as well. I am using aspect ratio of 16 to 9. However, you can choose whatever aspect ratio you want, or if you leave it out, you will get a square image. What is multi-prompt? When you add a double colon to a prompt on mid-journey, it indicates to the mid-journey bot that it should consider each part of the prompt separately. I will link the mid-journey documentation for this multi-prompt. Their example is hot the dog as one of them. So you can get a hot dog or hot and dog. So you can take a look at that. My starting prompt is close-up shot of an alien princess, green slime, hyper-realistic, and the aspect ratio parameter. Now, this is without any of the double colons, and here are the results. At this point, I am simply observing what I see. I am also running these prompts several times. I'm doing a lot of reruns, so I'm going to show you three different versions of these 4x4 grids. Now, let's start to add some of these double colons into this prompt. So the first place I'm going to add it is after the word alien. I leave no space between the two colons, and then also I put it right after the word alien. And here are those results. So if I'm looking for a specific style, this is how I can manipulate the prompt a bit more to get more of what I'm looking for. So in this case, if I wanted the emphasis to be more on the alien, I would or could use the double colon right after the alien because all of these images here are more alien-like. So let's say what happens if I put the double colon after the word princess. Here are these results. These ones are great. I actually like these ones for what I may be looking for, and I'll get to it later on. I'll show you how I actually use some of these images. These are the same. I can definitely notice a difference using the double colon after the word alien and after the word princess. Now, what happens when I put the double colon after green slime? Here we go. I also like these images, so I could use some of these or any of these for my purposes. Also, while I'm running these images, I upscale all of the ones that I like. Not every single one of them, but all of the ones that I like. So for example, in this one, I upscaled the top left corner one. Now, what happens when I add two double colons? So in this case, after the word alien and after the word princess, here's what happens. And again, I am simply just observing, and if I'm going somewhere and I'm looking for something specific, these are just techniques that I can use to see if I can guide the prompt a little bit more where I want to go. So in this case, if I wanted it to be more alien-like, I could use the double colon after the alien, and even in this case, the princess, because it still affects the alien part as well, while having the double colon on both of them. Now, if I switch the double colon from alien to green slime, this is what happens. Now, these images started to get a bit funkier, in my opinion. Um, there's a, a little bit more variation, but definitely less of the alien and more of the princess and um, this type of a green slimy vibe. Let's put the double colon on after all of these words, alien, princess, and green slime. Here are these results. There is more variation. There's also some more of the alien-like images and as well as close-ups. Some of these are great as well. And some of these are a little out there, <laughs> which is not a problem at all. Of course, I could still use it depending on where I want to use it. Here are some of the images that I upscaled that I liked as I was running the prompts. And depending on where I'm going with this, 
Um, I can use them. I can save them for later. I just like to upscale the ones that I like and that catch my eye. It doesn't mean that I'm going to use them immediately, but maybe I can use them somewhere later on, whether it's for demonstration purposes or storyboarding or where have you. In this case, I had an idea that I wanted to tell a story. Here is how I'm doing that. I'm taking one of the images that the prompt generated, and I took this particular one. Now, this has some post-production processing. I took this to Photoshop, and I added a little bit more to the right-hand side of this image because I wanted to make these images 21 to 9 ratio. Now, I still did this image or this prompt with this aspect ratio of 16 to 9. However, I just then go and alter it in Photoshop after the fact. So this was the image that first caught my eye and I had a story in mind that I wanted to tell with this. So the next step that I did is I ran several prompts with this particular prompt, macro shot of tentacle suction cup, dark bluish gray, sl green slime, minimalism, and then the aspect ratio. Now, I tweaked this and tweaked this and it took some doing. And I also took this to Photoshop and made some changes to it, including the aspect ratio and also color correction so that it would match the first this image that I had. Because if you look at it right now, it's not exactly the same. Then I did a close up shot of alien eggs growing in a jungle covered in green slime, dark grayish blue, eerie minimalism. And this is one of my favorite images of that batch that I was doing. Again, I did this several times. It's just a little bit more tedious when you're trying to match it with something that you're already working on, which was my first image of the alien princess. And this is where I take it. I called this particular series of three images, the set mother. You can imagine the story with these three images. So this is one way I could create a short story or a glimpse of a story using images from Mid Journey. Thank you so much for watching.